Happy autumnal equinox to listeners in the Northern Hemisphere. Pfizer announced that a low dose of its vaccine is safe and effective for kids ages 5 to 11. Well, that's good. Jimmy Fallon said it's great news until you hear a six-year-old say, I want to do my own research first. Fallon, meanwhile, four-year-olds are like, yeah, don't mind us. We'll just keep Clorox wiping our Legos. Kimmel. According to a Pfizer board member, a vaccine for children could be available by the end of October. Well, I know what I'll be handing out for Halloween, a fun-sized Pfizer. It's a version of the Pfizer vaccine that's much, much weaker, so they're calling it Johnson & Johnson. Great joke, Fallon. Of course, a lot of kids will get the vaccine, while a small minority will insist on taking pony dewormer because they're children. Seth Meyers said one way you can tell the Republican Party is intellectually bankrupt is that they spend very little time talking about policy and a lot more time talking about bats, S-word, conspiracy theories that they concocted out of nowhere. It's so hard to keep up with the right-wing rumor mill that sometimes I'll only find about one after it's been debunked. Yesterday I was scrolling through Twitter and saw a Snopes headline that said, No, Joe Biden is not a Westworld robot created by George Soros to steal your hamburgers. And I thought... All right, I forgot to tape Judge Janine last night, Seth again. So the left is focused on trying to pass a far-reaching bill that would transform child care, expand the social safety net, and tackle climate change, among other things. And what's the MAGA crowd doing? Are they offering alternative solutions, or are they asking Eric Trump about Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's swollen balls? From the Bro Bible, three times, Norm MacDonald lost everything he's owned three times thanks to a compulsive gambling issue. Norm eventually landed in a psychiatrist's office. The psychiatrist said, you're fixating on gambling in order to escape your real thoughts. And I said to him, isn't that why you do everything in life? I stumped him. Bro Bible says in 2011, Norm put down $25,000 on a Manny Pacquiao fight to beat Shane Mosley. Despite the payout being just $3,000 and Norm not knowing a thing about boxing, Norm told Larry King one time the biggest bet he ever placed was $400,000 on the Super Bowl in 1999, taking the money line, paying 3-1. to one. Norm lost it all. In 2011, Norm told Mark Marin, I've never had substance abuse problems, but it's like people who know they're going to hit bottom and kind of want it because it gets exhausting to be obsessed with something. If you have $450,000 in the bank and you lose $400,000, you go, F it. I don't want to have $50,000. I don't want money to remind me I had more money. I did a stupid thing one time. This was my big statement over at Atlantic City on the boardwalk. I threw $60,000 into the ocean to quit the same way a drug addict would throw his drugs into the ocean. GQ also has gambling stories and wrote, As far as cushy gigs go, this one was sweet for Norm MacDonald. Fly from L.A. to Vegas on a Saturday morning, do stand-up comedy, collect $40,000 in cash, but there was a potential catch when it came to playing Vegas. Norm said, If I'm in a casino, I'm going to gamble. Norm performed at the House of Blues at Mandalay Bay, dressed in baggy cotton slacks, Tommy Bahama golf shirt, and a black leather jacket. He killed. After closing the show, Norm stashed half of the $40,000 in his Mandalay Suites wall safe. Then the writer and Norm went to the Mirage. The writer tells a story of one time Norm beginning with $5,000. Norm promptly loses $2,000 and then bet his remaining $3,000 on a single hand of blackjack. Then I got dealt two aces and had no money left. I asked the dealer, "Uh, how can I split them? The dealer says, sir, you can't unless you have a line of credit. I didn't, so I hit. I got a 10, hit again, and got another 10. If I'd been able to split it, I'd have two 21s. Instead, I lost the last of my money. That's when you walk away numb, you feel blank, and you can't find the elevator. Hoping to even things up a little, Norm entered the glistening mirage and headed straight for a scrum of craps tables. He dropped a stack of hundreds upon the felt and bought in for $10,000 armed with 20 purple chips. Norm spread $1,500 across various wages He planned on employing what he liked to call his pensioner system. It centered around betting on don't pass, which is wagering for the house to win and for fellow players to lose. Norm said, I've devised this as a way of bleeding my money the slowest. Acknowledging that over the long haul, craps is unbeatable. After I start to win, though, I always go a little crazy. Then I rein in the crazy guy with the robotic approach of my pensioner system. This is all from GQ. Norm MacDonald read Beat the Dealer at age 8 and learned to count cards. Growing up on a farm in Canada, he passed time by dealing himself endless hands of bridge. Once Norm discovered Vegas in 1993, the Mirage became his weekend getaway of choice, though he might have been able to use his Beat the Dealer skills to win at Blackjack. That was never the point. He was there to gamble, not to methodically grind out a low percentage profit. Norm never wanted a sure thing. Norm told a story, I booked us a room at Treasure Island. 
While we were waiting online to check in, I looked at the tables and I told my mother and aunt that I'd meet them upstairs. I had three grand with me, no cash advance capabilities on my credit card and no ATM card. I started betting $100 a hand. I had four splits and I lost them all. Suddenly, I was playing for $500 trying to catch up. After less than half a shoe, I was finished, completely broke. I sat up in the room for the rest of the trip, watching Matlock on TV and listening to my aunt complaining about being down a buck and a half playing nickel slots. Norm said, the worst thing is you lose a lot of money and someone at the table thinks you're a billionaire because you've been on TV a couple times. Today's Daily Comedy News is brought to you by the Palace Intrigue Podcast. That is the daily podcast about the British royal family. I'm the writer on that. Here's the gist. Kate Middleton, wonderful. Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, they're up to something and we know it. We have a lot of fun giving them the business. Palace Intrigue, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, a couple things to catch up on. Artie Lang dropped an episode of his podcast for the first time in a long time. He told some gambling stories involving Norm MacDonald. Um, I'm worried about Artie. I'm always worried about Artie. I think we're all always worried about Artie. So he showed up on his feed for, I don't know, the first time in a year. And the audio quality wasn't that good. Now, this is a guy who has hosted several podcasts. So he's probably got good access to a decent microphone. So I don't know what Artie's situation is, but that just rang my spidey senses, making me go, huh? On Instagram at Daily Comedy News, Mr. Terry Lee Myers said, Hacks is incredible. You'll love it. That in response to me saying, I haven't watched Hacks and now that it won an Emmy, I should probably check it out and be cool, but I have not done that yet. So, Terry Lee Myers, I will check that out. From Deadline, Lauren Michaels talked about the upcoming season of Saturday Night Live and said, As for the cast, Lauren says, I think it's going out next week. We're just finalizing one thing. And then we count the first four shows at the same time. And there's some new cast, and they'll be announced this week, too. Who are these people that might be hosting? Michael said, believe me, they're people you've heard of. When Michael's asked about Jason Sudeikis' Emmy win for Best Comedy Actor for Ted Lasso, Michael said, Jason will be coming back soon to SNL. I'm very happy about that as well, which is sort of an answer to the first question, but in no particular order. Speaking about Norm MacDonald's legacy to the show, Lauren Michael said, I think he met the world to people there. I could tell you from the number of people I've heard from and the people who've gone and talked about Norm. When you work with someone for that many years and they make you laugh and you're aware of who they are as a person, as a friend, I think Norm was one of the funniest people I've ever known. And because he's Canadian, I'd put him up there in the top five. When he was at the show... I was always in awe of how long he could take to tell a joke and how long he would pause before he told another joke. He never pandered. He was always going to do it the way he wanted to do it. And if you waited, you were really happy you did. I call it integrity, but integrity probably has been mentioned 50 times. But he had integrity. From NPR, Neil Brennan. You know Neil. He co-created Chappelle's show with Dave Chappelle was the other co-creator of Chappelle's show. Neil Brennan has thought a lot about whether he's accepted in comedy and whether or not he ever should be. He's tackling those feelings of self-criticism in a one-man show off-Broadway. He's been wondering if he, as a white man, is helping or hurting America when he makes racial jokes. He told the Morning Edition host A. Martinez, The tension is it's unknowable whether I'm making fun of stereotypes or encouraging them. People don't know your intentions, and then people will take the joke and put their intentions on it. From the Washington Post, Al Franken is back on tour. He said, it's very hard as a senator to do a comedy tour, adding that he now has the freedom to do many things. Franken said, I like Ted Cruz more than most of my colleagues like Ted Cruz, and I really hate Ted Cruz. (laughs) Got some John Mulaney gossip for you from OK Magazine. OK Magazine's got a source, and the source says, it's no secret. Olivia has been wanting to settle down. While Mulaney once insisted he didn't want kids... The source says he's in a different headspace now. He's in love, and he can't imagine his life any other way. The source adds, they've talked about marriage, and it's something they'll consider. But right now, they're taking it day by day. Mulaney, who's been based in New York City, is, quote, open to moving to L.A. if that's where Olivia Munn wants to be. He thinks the world of her and knows she'll be a great mom. And Hulu is getting ready to launch another Marvel animated series. This one is called Hit Monkey. Hit Monkey is a show about a monkey assassin looking to avenge his murdered family members. I kind of want to do that as Norm MacDonald. About a monkey assassin. But wait, before you say, oh, weird, the AV Club said, did we mention that the monkey assassin is great friends with a ghost and the ghost is played by Jason Sudeikis? 
The series will also feature the voices of George Takei. George plays a politician who's apparently a good guy. And the other voice, Olivia Munn. You know Olivia Munn from I'm Dating John Mulaney. The trailer for the show features Hitmonkey suiting up like John Wick and Jason Sudeikis ghost Kraken Wise and offers a quick glimpse of Marvel villain Lady Bullseye, meaning this will have some connection to a wider Marvel universe. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow this show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Instagram at Daily Comedy News, buymeacoffee.com slash Daily Comedy News. See you tomorrow.